beyond messaging in Google Spaces. Recently, we've taken a look at creating spaces and adding and managing files within those spaces. Today, I want to take a step away from messaging and investigate chat's relationship with the rest of the Google Workspace. First, let's look at inline threaded replies. In a previous video, we looked at how to reply to a message in a side thread so that it doesn't disturb the flow of the central conversation. Now let's look at how you can pick up that conversation as it develops. Having navigated away and returning back to your space, if there has been any new messages in your side conversation, you will see a new reply indicator at the top right hand side of your space. Clicking on this indicator will show recently updated reply threads that you are following. It's important to note that if you reply in a thread that you will automatically start following that conversation. You can stop following by clicking the following button on the thread shown here and here in another thread. Threads that you are not up to date with will have an unread note and will be highlighted in blue for quick reference. Click the unread signifier to open the conversation, read the message and access the message box. Before wholeheartedly adopting chat, one of my biggest concerns was very much around the management of important information. I wondered, how can I recover chats where a course of action was agreed or double check important communications to make sure I grasp them correctly? But it's possible to lift important chats out of chat and into your inbox. Here I have received an important chat. It's come from management and it outlines the approved course of action when dealing with queries relating to a critical ongoing situation the company is facing. I want a copy in my inbox to label and refer back to with ease. Hover over the message until you can see the kebab menu appear. Select forward to inbox, pop into your inbox tab and here you can see your chat. In the email you can see the host space for the chat, you can see some previous chats for context and scrolling down you have a button which will snap you to the chat's location within the space. You can, of course, label the chat for later reference or move from the inbox into a label. This message that I've received seems very important, so I might wish to verbally brief the team in addition by scheduling a meeting. I can do this quickly without leaving my space by accessing the plus button to the left of the message box and selecting calendar invitation. To the right, the calendar pops out and will begin a calendar event. Notice here it has pre-populated the event for me, selecting today's date, the current time, a default duration and added all the members of the space as guests. I can now edit as appropriate. I'm scheduling the meeting for Monday at 10 a.m. Also, the event title has auto-populated with the space name. I can edit or overwrite this. Personally, I like it that it has the space name drawing guests' attention to its relation to the project, so I'm appending further detail. The find a time function is there if I wish to quickly check calendars, and I have functionality to add a description, and a Google Meet link is already added. So now I need only click save and share to send to all guests. The event appears in my calendar and a notice of the event appears in the conversation thread. Clicking the event in the message thread allows my guests to quickly RSVP. So we can schedule a meeting, but what can we do if we need to get everybody face to face at speed? To brief everyone available at speed, I can message the group and include a meet link. Combining this with an at all would be advisable to make sure everyone gets a notification for the message. Access from the meet to the green room in seconds and join the call. As an instant meeting, there will be no meeting name, no guest list or attachment. You will need to consider adding a meeting if you need these, but I simply use the meet link regularly to quickly jump into a room and thrash out an idea, a decision, or even just to catch up and debrief. We looked at assigning tasks in spaces, but let's take a closer look at where and how we can manage those tasks. 
Creating tasks in spaces, I can, of course, add the tasks and not add a date or an assignee initially, or ever, to be honest. But as with anything, the more you put in, the more you get back. Once I have assigned this task with a date and time, let's see where it pulls to. First stop, the task application. Tucked into the right-hand side navigation across the workspace, you will find the task application. Adding a task in spaces will create a record in the assignee's My Tasks list. It will pull in the date, the time, any details added, and a link back to the task in spaces. As the assignee, I can manage the task from inside its kebab menu. Notice here I have a delete option available. If I click to delete the task, because this is a space task, I get a pop-up to determine if I wish to completely delete and remove the task from the space or to simply unassign myself, leaving the task unassigned and still in the space. If I'm happy to accept the task, I can quickly reorganize this task into a relevant list for me. Next up, the calendar. If I engage my tasks calendar and select the task date I assigned, I can see the task on my calendar. Tasks will only appear in the calendar if you assign a date. If there is no assigned time, they will still appear, but they will be at the top of the day in the calendar. If a time is assigned, they will appear as an event at that time. Now you can assess your tasks with reference to other scheduled events in your day or week. If there is a clash, you can simply drag and drop your task to another time. You can also edit the task details using the edit icon. And of course, you can mark the task completed in calendar or in tasks or in spaces. Managing your task in multiple places. Two, three, another useful link from the app menu is contacts. If you need information on your space members, simply launch contacts from the app menu and click on a contact to see contact details, recent interactions, and quick links to email, add calendar invites, chat one-to-one, -one, or quickly invite your contact to a meet window. Integrate SaaS products and Google Marketplace applications into your space. From the main space menu, access apps and integrations. Select the add apps buttons and search for the app that you are looking for in the keyword search box. You'll find big player integrations like Monday, Trello, Asana and Jira, as well as some fun chat specific apps like Polly. Polling application, great for understanding team preference and boosting buy-in. Lastly, voice customers can reach out directly from spaces. My colleague needs a little more convincing. Perhaps she needs more information. By clicking on her avatar, I can snap into a one-to-one -one chat with her. Now I want to lift the phone to her rather than chat. We are both voice subscribers and in the same organisation, so in the chat window we have a phone icon. Clicking here will start a voice call which she will receive either in her browser or perhaps on a mobile device if she has that application set up. In addition, I can place a video call to her instantly connecting through a video window without having to add a meet link. So we've explored a lot of interoperable functions here. We've picked up on threaded replies, learned how to forward chats to the inbox. We understand how to schedule meetings or add instant meetings. We've managed our task throughout lots of different places in the Google Workspace. And we've accessed contact details and interactions for space members. In some cases, we've connected applications and integrations and if you're a Google Voice package holder, you can undertake voice and video call. I hope you're feeling more comfortable with Google Chat and Spaces. 
As always, drop us a line for any questions and we'll see you next time.